the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumase, the second established public university in Ghana, has been in existence for 70 years. KNUST is situated approximately on a 16 square kilometer campus of undulating land and pleasant surroundings, which is about 7 kilometers from the center of the city of Kumasi. The campus presents a panorama of beautiful and modern buildings, interspersed with nicely manicured lawns and tropical flora, providing a congenial ambience for academic study. Starting with just 200 students in 1952, the university can now boast of over 80,000 student population. Demand for tertiary education nationally and worldwide in the last few decades has outstretched the limited resources of educational institutions. In short, whilst access to higher education has become critical, it is available to a minority few who can afford the high cost for education by traditional approach. The solution to this problem has been to utilize innovative approaches among which is Open and Distance Learning ODL. KNUST's Plan 2K14 is aimed at 50,000 student overall enrollment by 2015. In line with the objective of uh, expanding access to higher education uh, at KNUST, um, a, a faculty of distance learning was established under the College of Science to really serve all other colleges in terms of ongoing uh, programs and also new programs to be designed. But that really created the impression that it is a College of Science affair. And so in 2007, uh, it was redesignated as the Institute of Distance Learning, taken out of the college and uh, was now mandated to leverage on the programs that are being run in all the colleges to actually put them on a platform for distance learners. The Institute of Distance Learning currently provides limited facilitated face-to-face -face sessions at 10 regional learning centers in Accra, Bogatanga, Cape Coast, Ho, Kuforidia, Kumase, Sekendi Takrade, Sunyane, Tamale and Wa, and three district learning centers in Akusumu, Takwa, and Tema. Outside the main campus in Kumasi, IDLK and UST has put up structures in Accra at Kwabenya, Mori near Cape Coast, Tamale, and secondly, Takrade at uh, Kansa Orodo. The Kwabenya building has 10 lecture theaters of total capacity of 1,305 seats two computer rooms of combined capacity of 200 seats, three section uh, e-resource room of a total capacity of 80, and uh, 12 offices. So the moment I got the hint that KNUST was offering it and that it was a, a distance course weekend class, I thought, wow, it's a good opportunity for me to also be able to enroll and acquire the knowledge I've always been seeking to have. So it's been a blessing in disguise for me. The second D Takuradi building provides 15 lecture rooms with total capacity of 980 seats, a 100 seater computer room, e resource room of a seating capacity of 80 and 12 offices. It's been amazing so far actually because you're looking at um, moving all the way from Takradi to Kumase to like have lectures and all that and now you have it so close to you with working and everything. It's very fine. And it's, it's a good experience uh, moving from uh, town to here but not campus, not Kumasi. It is it's better. Another one in Tamale.
Hello, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure of the management of the Institute of Distance Learning to warmly welcome you all to our orientation program. As fresh students of the Institute, this program is to afford you the opportunity to know certain basic issues with respect to your education with us. The program as it is promises to be very short, but very educative. The program lineup for the orientation will be as follows. First, the director of the institute will welcome us to the orientation program. His short address will be followed by a presentation on the general overview of the institute to be delivered by the institute registrar. The national president of the Distance Learning Students Association of KNUSD will also deliver a very short message of welcome. Tell us about the association and what it holds for us. The Institute Finance Officer will then brief us on financial issues with respect to the payment of fees. His presentation will be followed by the Institute Examination Officer, who will let us know all about examination issues. The Institute Counselor will also brief us on counseling services that are available to you as students of the Institute. And this will be followed by a question and answer session to answer every question of yours. As I said earlier, the program promises to be very short but very educative. So please stay tuned in. My name is Abraham Edusei, an assistant registrar at the Institute of Distance Learning. Thank you and welcome to our program. Dear Fresh Institute of Distance Learning students, on behalf of management of the Institute of Distance Learning, that is IDL, I have the pleasure to welcome you to this important orientation program. Do first accept my hearty congratulations for gaining admission to further your education at Ghana's premier science and technology institution. Indeed, it is a unique opportunity for you to join a multitude of KNUSC alumni across the globe, contributing their quota to the development of Mother Ghana in different ways of endeavor. As fresh students of the Institute, there is the need to orient you on a lot of issues pertaining to your studies. In view of this, this orientation program has been put together to inform you about the Institute and the way we conduct our affairs. You will get to know our unique blended mode of delivery where we combine face-to-face -face and online activities. You will also be briefed on student registration and how to register your courses every semester, the payment of your school fees, as well as the conduct of examinations. The various support services, including counseling services available to you. Your general rights and responsibilities and other information relevant to you as a student of the Institute would also be touched on during this program. As a science and technology university, we are taking opportunity of the various advantages of technology to deliver this orientation program virtually. This way, you can play back the recorded video as many times as you want in order to get any information you may have missed. In addition to this general orientation program, it is expected that specific program orientation would also be conducted for you immediately after this program or during your first day of face-to-face -face lecture. There would also be a live question and answer session where your concerns will be addressed as part of this program. All these have been put together to help you find your feet as fresh students of the Institute in tandem with our core value of being student-centered. I once again welcome you to this program and to the Institute where you will find your study period very fulfilling and exciting. On behalf of management and the board of the Institute, I pledge our utmost best to make your study period very smooth and successful. Congratulations once again, and welcome to our orientation program. As I start, welcome you to the program. 
I'm here to give you the overview of Institute of Distant Learning. And my name is Usu Ansa Debra, the Institute Registrar. I have the pleasure of the board and management of the Institute of Distant Learning to welcome you to this session of our orientation program. I'm to give you an overview, as I've said, into our unique operations in the university. IDEA provides a viable complement to the traditional face-to-face -face mode of university education. This alternative is provided in a flexible mode through our virtual classroom platform and face-to-face -face session. In view of our level of visibility, majority of our students, as you are here, are professionals or in the working class. Our vision as ideal is to be a leading institute in providing access to continuing and tertiary education and training through distant learning in Africa. And because of this, our mission is to provide increased access to quality, flexible and demand-driven continuing and tertiary education programs through the use of a wide range of information, communication and management techniques, our values, our quality education and training, equitable access to tertiary education, culture of excellence, and learner centeredness. This is how we govern ourselves. Ideal is one of the colleges, so to speak, of the university. So we have a board and a management committee, both chaired by the director of the institute. So the management team are Professor Matthew Glover Adu. The director is Professor Anthony Andrews. My good self, Oye Debra, is the Institute Registrar. We have Dr. Phyllis O. Boatin, who is the Institute's Finance Officer. Dr. Foster Frimpong, the Exams Officer. And Mr. Francis Kantugori, who is the Internal Auditor. We have other senior members assisting us. And they are Dr. Daniel Poku, who is Assistant Examinations Officer. Mrs. Joy Amankwa, Assistant Registrar in charge of the Accra Center. We have Mrs. Maureen Odai, who is also Assistant Registrar and also at the Accra Center. Mr. Bukaza Zuga, Assistant Registrar in charge of our Northern Sector. Mr. Abraham Aduse, also in Kumase, so the Midlands, and then the Western Zone, the overseas there. We have Mr. Chris Ovado, who is a senior stand registrar in charge of our e-learning technologies. We also have Ms. Ama Mansa Kusi, assistant registrar. We have learning zones dotted around the countries where we have our face-to-face -face facilitation and also we write examinations in most of the centers, especially the end of semester exams. The learning centers are grouped in four zones, as I've talked about, and they are manned by our zona coordinators, ably assisted by our center coordinators. The northern zone, we have the northern region, upper east, upper west, Savannah and of each regions. When we talk about the southern zones, we are, we are talking about Greater Accra, Eastern, Oti, and Water regions. Our Midland zones, we are talking about the Ashanti region, Bono, Brun East, and Ahafu regions. The western zone are the western, western north, and central regions. Let me quickly tell you where they are, our centers are located in these regions, as I've said. 
Kumasi, we are on our main campus here, that they will find us at Castle Hayford Building, also known as Examination Building. We are located at the second floor. In Accra, we are at Accra City Centre, Kwabenya. Very nice block. We also moved to Akat Hill Centre at the Regent University College premises. That's where we are located. We have some of our uh, diploma programs also at Kwabenya. JHS. In Sunyane, we are located at the Catholic Pastoral Social and Training Center, the Chimel Road, New Doma Community. In Second D, Itakrade, we are at Cancer Road. Also, we built our structure there, very beautiful, you will enjoy it. Ho, we are located at the Ho Technical University. In Koforudia, we are Ghana Highway Authority Training School. On the Koforo Suhum Road. Tema, we are located at ECG Training School Community 10. Tamale, we are at News Nailing Center, Kapohini. Also, we have facilitation New Life College behind Tamale Technical University. Atwa, we are located at Dr. Hilary Mann Technical University. And Borga, we are at Borga Senior High School. Big Boss, they call them. We are located at their technical block. Our mode of delivery, that's the teaching, is the hybrid or blended. You can call it synchronous and asynchronous. Don't be bothered, you know what it means. This means that you will attend face to face or physical lectures and have online lectures as well. Please do check your respective programs timetable to know when you have online or face-to-face -face lectures, sometimes we call facilitation. We have what we call the virtual classroom. As a distant learning institute, a lot of activities are carried out virtually. We normally use our virtual classroom the address is myclass.knust.edu.gh. Zoom, YouTube, and other social media handles, you are there to conduct our teaching business. The virtual classroom that I spoke about is an online classroom that allows you students to communicate, view presentations, interact, of learning resources and work in groups so we see you can do much there so visit the platform with your login details that you are supplied with and those who have not been supplied with it means you've not paid your fees so after you pay your fees you can get the live classes there you assess your course materials your lecture slides or videos and a whole lot of others don't worry, we'll be taking through the basics of the virtual classroom and other applications such as the AIM app for your course registration and course brief. As I've said, don't worry, you have dedicated programs, specific support teams for all our programs to assist you students with most of your issues pertaining to the use of the B class. Our students are also provided free Vodafone SIM and every month we supply you with data and call credit. So please, you know that we have your other cars when it's supplied to you, use them for the information that will help you to complete your program. We have other student support services. Let me just give you a summary. You have your academic support. That is your lecturers are there, heads of departments are there to support you. We have administrative support. Yes, I introduced myself as a registrar and all the other registrars, they are there to support you. We have also counseling services who also will speak to you. So you know him and then the, how they can support you. And the academic support, you are here purposely for academic work. So we cannot do without them. So we provide you lecture materials, videos, slides, your user names and passwords, the timetable for both lectures and examinations, 
and then the details of your facilitators. In fact, it means your lecturers, your professors, you have their line to call them on academic matters. We have the support team. There are also program coordinators. We have your facilitators. There are also lead facilitators. And all this, you can find them in our website. I must say that as an ideal student, you must be regular at our website for all the information that you need. Yes, the administrative tool will provide you your student ID cards. If you wanted or you need a letter of introduction, you provided with one. We are just beginning. There's called academic transcripts. We will give you one when you are you've written your first exam. And then you may, you may, you may change your program. If you want to change your program and you meet the requirement for change, we can do so for you. In each of all the services that I'm talking about, you want to write officially to the director of the institute. And always when we are writing, please don't forget to quote your index or student numbers because the names may be similar. So don't forget your student number or the index number. You provide your email address, the program study, so that we can identify you so easily. Every program, there is a head of the department. There is also a coordinator and an examinations officer. As you register, you get to know your heads of departments and these officers to assist you in your academic work. Remember, I told you our staffs are dotted around the country. Everybody is ready to assist you. Yes, I've said that. Look at our website. There you can get information for those to contact. If you have any issues, please liaise with all these staff. We have the institute examinations officer. He's there. I promise you see him because he will address you. He will give you all that you need about the conduct of your examinations in this university. The university has the rules that governs the conduct of the examinations. So please read them. If you go to the website, you can find it there in the student guide. It's available. Now that we are yet to start the lecture, please read them. If you indulge yourself in examination or practice, I used to say that if you cheated formally, you were not caught. Now don't risk it. No examination or practice. But if you do that and you are caught, these are the steps. One, you write the paper. You continue to write the paper, you finish. And after that paper, you'll be made to write a statement. Please be truthful in writing the statement. Then you'll be invited to Kumase, usually. No matter where it's happened, you come to Kumase to face a committee set for that purpose, to hear you on the allegation of examination or practice. I tell you, it's not a pleasant experience. So please, 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 please don't involve yourself in examination more practice. If you are found guilty, these are the offenses that you are likely to receive. Yes, if it's on the lower side, you may be warned not to do that again, or you'll be reprimanded, or you'll be rusticated for a period from the university, or you can be suspended from the university. Yes, still, you can be dismissed from the university. And let me caution you on that. If you are dismissed from this university, you copy all the universities in Ghana, at least the public ones. So whether they will admit somebody who has cheated in exams is for them to consider. But we will do that. Or even if you have taken your certificate and you find that you cheated, we will withdraw your certificate. So please. It is not pleasant to involve yourself in examination more practice. Remember that the university has a general disciplinary authority over all students enrolled. You are considered to be on probation for the entire period of your program of study. And you may be withdrawn at any time for unsatisfactory academic work or misconduct. All students are thus expected to abide by the rules and regulations guiding 
they are steady and for that matter this university there will be questions and answers session as part of this orientation program so that we give you opportunity to ask questions and we clarify most of them as much as we can i once again congratulate you for gaining admission to study with this university called Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Thank you very much. It feels just like yesterday when I was a freshman like you, sitting under this virtual orientation program and thinking through what the idea had to offer me. Today, on behalf of the entire Distant Learning Students Association, or the DELSA, we congratulate you for gaining admission to the best university in Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Institute of Distance Learning, where you are provided with stellar atmosphere, convenient enough for teaching, learning, and your capacity growth. My name is Victor Togo, the National President of the KNUST Distance Learning Students Association. I welcome you to KNUST. I welcome you home. The Distant Learning Students Association is divided into three different sectors, namely the Southern Sector, which comprises all the learning centers in Accra, Tema, Kofuidia, and Ho, the Midland Sector, which also comprises all the learning centers in Kumasi, Wa, Tamale, and Sunyani, and finally, the Western Sector, which now is the learning center in Sekendi, Takradi. All these sectors have executives led by a vice president. The Distant Learning Students Association is the student representative or the student governing body for all distant learning students of the KNUST. Our student leaders, our outfits are open to you 24-7. We greatly encourage you to interact with us on all issues that border on your interest and convenience as students. We have reps all across our learning centers, ready to channel your grievances to the national executives and from the national executives we take to management. This year, we are poised on holding activities, initiatives, programs, and projects that seek to promote your well-being and interest as students. We welcome you to the KNUST IDL family. We hope that you have a fantastic academic year. God bless. I welcome you to IDL uh, Finance Office. Um, Dr. Felix Obey Boateng, I happen to be the Institute Finance Officer. I'm here to give you a brief about how your studentship with the Institute will relate to my office as the Finance Office. I'm here to speak to you about category of fees that you pay as a student of the IDL, the terms of payment of which students are much interested in most of the times, and in case you have any further inquiries where you go. There are three categories of fees that IDA students pay. You have the tuition fee, which is applicable to every student. We have receipt fee, depending whether you trail a paper or not. Then we have thesis extension fee, which is peculiar to postgraduate students who will not be able to complete their studies within the stipulated one year period. In the case for MSc and uh, two years in case for MPhil. Students are mandated to pay fees only through the designated banks that have been chosen by management of the university. And these are the banks. You have GCB, CBG, Ecobank, Republic Bank, Stambik Bank, APSA Bank, Stanchard Bank, UBA, and Car Bank. When you walk to any of the branches of these banks, you should be able to pay your fees. But the account name, but through which you pay your fees is KNUST main fee collection account. You walk to the branch and you say that I'm paying fees to KNUST and account name is KNUST fee collection account. Please make sure you have your student ID rightly indicated on the paying slip of any of the banks that you walk to to pay your fees. It's very important because it's the unique number that we can use to update your account. Now, what are the terms of payment? Students are given terms of payment based on their category. We have postgraduate 
and undergraduates. In fact, undergraduate goes with the diploma programs. If you are a postgraduate student, you need to pay what we call a commitment fee of 6,000 Ghana CDs. Note that this 6,000 Ghana CDs is part payment of your fees. It's not in addition to what has been billed you as a tuition fee for the year. If you are undergraduate or diploma student, you are to pay 1,500. Now, as a commitment fee, when you pay this amount, you will be given access to the online portal that you can have access to online lectures, online assignment, and do all these things. If you don't pay the commitment fee as stipulated, then you wouldn't be able to access the online resources of the institute. Now, when you are done with this commitment fee, the arrangement is that you are to pay at least 70% of the fees before you'll be able to write your end of first semester examination. When you are done with the end of first semester examination, the remaining 30% of your fee, we're talking about tuition fee here, must be made before you can register for a second semester. These are the approved arrangements that we have for you. For inquiries with any issue related to finance, you can call our hotline number, 0540-206-262. You can use this number to contact us by using a WhatsApp or a voice call. And in case you want to have a one-on-one -on -one personal discussion with myself or any of my staff, you can visit us on the second floor in Castle Hayford building, and you can come and speak to us and we'll address your issues. We thank you for having your studentship with the Institute. This is orientation from the IDL exams office. We want to take you through the significance of examination, the rules and regulations governing our exams. As far as examinations is concerned, first of all, a student needs to register. Registration is what makes you a student as far as KNUST and all other universities are concerned, students are permitted to write exams in only the courses they have registered for. If you've not registered for any course, you don't have any right to write exams in that particular paper or course. So it's compulsory for students to register their courses at the beginning of the semester. There shall not be registration by prosy. That means that students are supposed to do the registration themselves. The UITS has developed an AIM app that students are supposed to use to register their courses at the beginning of each semester. So every student is supposed to register the courses that he or she is supposed to do within the semester. You register those courses and we expect that you pass them. Why do we even have to write exams? Investi, investi, investi. You go for lectures and at the end of the semester, we expect that you write examination and then pass in all the courses that you registered for. This gives us the ability to assess the student on various grounds so that we will know that whether the student has acquired a minimum level of knowledge in that branch of study that the student is pursuing. A student success in an examination therefore helps employers and others to assess his or her mental ability or general ability in the university. You are awarded a degree after pursuing the required examination. After conducting all the examination and others, how do we grade our students or how do we assess them after examination? We have two ways of assessing them and we combine them to the 100%. We have the continuous assessment and then we have the end of semester. The continuous assessment consists of assignment, mid-semester examination, group work, term papers, any other thing prior to the conduction of the end of semester are all computed together as continuous assessment. And for undergraduate, it consists of 30%. And for postgraduate, it consists of 40%.
For end of semester, undergraduate is 70 marks and postgraduate is 60 marks. So at the end, we put the continuous assessment mark and then the end of semester mark together to add up to 100%. So for undergraduate, we have 30 plus 70, making 100. And then for postgraduate, we have 40 continuous assessment and then 60 end of semester making 100. You are expected to get a good pass in all these. For undergraduates, the minimum CWA that a student is supposed to get to get a certificate from KNUST is 45. And for postgraduate, the minimum CWA is 55.00. This means that you need to pass and pass well. As far as examination is concerned, we have what we call examination more practice. We take keen interest in our examinations. The university does not allow exams more practice and so punishes any infringement as far as examination is concerned. And it includes dismissal or any other punishment if the student is found culpable. Our grading start from grade A, B, C, and D. D is the pass mark, the last others, or what we consider as others, is the F. When you get 40 to 49, you get a grade of D in terms of assessment of students. 50 to 59 is C, 60 to 69 is B, and 70 up to 100 is A. And these are the grades that students can score at the end of the examination. So in any of the courses, students will be graded according to these categories. When you are done with your program or at the end of the semester, we put all the courses and then the grades that you have done together and we classify you based on classes that has been categorized. We have the first class, second class upper division, second class lower division, and then a pass. Then those who will fail to attain a CWA of more than 45, we consider them to be failed, or those category of people may not be able to graduate. Let's look at how do we put students into these classes. If you get a CWA of 70 and above, you fall within the first class category. 60 to 69, you fall within second class upper category. 50 to 59, second class lower category. 45 to 49 is considered to be pass. Then less than 45 is considered to be a fail or that particular student cannot graduate. Let's take note that you have to get at least a CWA of 45% to get a pass. If you fail to get anything more than that, you may be asked to either pick some courses or do some additional work before you can graduate. That one is for the undergraduate. For postgraduate, mostly most of our MSc's program are one year. You need a minimum of 55.00 CWA before you can move to the next level. So for you to finish your one year program, your CWA at the postgraduate level should not be less than 55.00. This is a little bit different from that of the undergraduate. So the, those doing MSc's program and then MPhil, let's take note of that. In terms of deferment, as a student, you have the right to defer your program. First year students can only defer the program on medical grounds. If the medical report is accepted by the Director of Health Services, KNUST, to be true, then the student will be granted the deferment. If not, the student is expected to continue his or her program. This implies that if there is any issue, we expect the students to write to IDL, to the director, indicating why the student cannot continue on the program. 
then it will be assessed and, if possible, granted the deferment. Continuous students can also write for deferment to the director within the first four weeks of reopening. So when school reopening and within the first four weeks, there are some issues and you think you may not be able to continue your program, you have every right to write for deferment. Please, let's take note of that so that we don't abuse this opportunity. As a student, we should all admit that throughout your program, you'll be on probation. Aside this, there are certain categories of students that will be tagged as probation. A student is tagged as probation, especially the undergraduate student. When your CWA is between 40.00 to 44.99. If your CWA is found within this category of, I mean, mark, then it means that you will be tagged probation, which means that you have to put in a lot of effort to move your CWA up. A student on probation is required to put in a lot of effort in order to bring the CWA up. Again, students can also repeat the year, what we call repetition. You can repeat year one, year two, and then year three. And normally, most of these are related to the undergraduate students or program. When your CWA is less than 40.00, it means that you have to repeat your program. The next issue that I want to talk about is withdrawal. When a student absent himself or herself from all courses for a semester's examination without reasonable excuse or reason, the student will be considered as withdrawn or the system will withdraw that student. So it's up to the students to make sure that you attend lectures, you go for all the seminars that you are expected to attend, you write mid -sem and then write end of semester examination. During end of semester examination, you are expected to indicate your name and then sign so that it will show that you were present during the exams. After writing your exams, examiners will mark and then your results will go through a whole lot of processes. When the results are out, students go and check their results through the AIM app. After checking their results as a student, you have the right to apply for remarking if you think that the mark that you have seen does not tally with the strength that you put in during your exams. So it's up to you to check and see if you want to apply for remarking or not. There are procedures for students who want to make such requests. And I will refer you to the student guide if you want to apply for remarking. This is a tertiary institution and you have the right to do whatever you want to do, but make sure that in doing whatever you are doing, you work within the rules and regulations that the university has outlined. Dressing. Students, both males and females, are entreated to dress decently to the examination hall and to any other gathering that students are expected to meet. Any candidate who does not dress decently would be refused entry into the examination hall or to where you are supposed to meet. Indecent exposure is not allowed. Please and please again, please and please again, you are expected to dress well. You are here to be trained. So please try as much as possible and try and then reform ourselves within this short period that you are going to stay with us. There are so many ways or rules governing our examination. I will go through some of them with you. But during exams, most of the rules will be pasted on the doors that you'll be writing examinations in. So try and then read them before you get in. 
Make sure that you acquaint yourself with the rules governing examination. All students will be checked in 45 minutes before the paper. So the starting time of the exams will be indicated and you are supposed to be there at least 45 minutes. Normally, the first paper starts at 8 a.m. The second paper starts at 11.30. The third paper starts at 3 p.m. These times are for end of semester examination. May semester exams and then supplementary examination times may differ. They may change depending on time and situation. Let me take this opportunity to also take you through how we deal with our timetables. Because we are dealing with students from different areas, different regions, we normally float the draft timetable on the IDEA website. So always you have to check from the IDEA website. The draft timetable will come out. When the draft timetable comes out, we expect that students will go through to check that all the courses that they have registered are on the timetable. One. Two, they are at good places for the student. If you have any issue regarding your examination timetable or any other thing or facilitation, try as much as possible to contact your program examination officer. Try to deal with your program examination officer, your program coordinator, or the worst situation, your HOD. Because we expect that mostly most of the issues will be sorted out by the program examination officer or the program coordinator. They will try as much as possible to assist you. The draft timetable will come out, then changes will be made in them, then we expect that the final timetable will follow suit. Don't always rely on the draft timetable. Always rely on the final timetable timetable. Students without ID cards will be refused entry into the examination room. During exams, we expect that you go there with all the necessary materials that you have to carry, including your identification card. And we are here, we are referring to the KNUST ID card, the card that your picture will be on. That is what we expect that you use in the examination room. What we also expect from students is that when you are ushered into the examination room, the invigilator in the room will assign you to a particular seat. Students are not supposed to select where they want to sit. It is the responsibility of the invigilator to assign you a seat and based on that, give you a paper to write. Before the invigilators will issue the scripts and uh, the question papers and everything to you, they will make sure that doors are closed and every student is seated. No candidate shall enter the examination room later than half an hour after the commencement of the examination. That means that when a paper is starting at 8, after 8.30, you cannot enter the room. The investing in its own wisdom we have reasons why we have come out with all these rules and regulations and we expect that you go by them religiously. No candidate will be allowed to leave the examination room until half an hour after the commencement of the examination. No candidate shall be allowed to leave the examination room within the last few minutes of the paper. And here the invigilators will prompt you if the time is not conducive to leave. Candidates are not permitted to commence writing on answer booklet, scannable sheet, question paper, until the invigilators instruct them to do so. If you write on any paper, booklet, scannable sheet, or on a question paper before you are told to do so, they are all considered to be part of the examination more practice and it will be handled as such. You are not expected to take any materials from the examination room until you are allowed to do so. Any candidate leaving an examination room shall be escorted by an attendant appointed by 
the invigilator for that purpose. So the invigilator shall take every necessary precaution, including physical search when a student is going out and when you are coming in. So unless specifically authorized by the examiner, no candidate shall take into the examination room an examination book or any other thing unless it is being specified. Other than that, you are not supposed to go to the examination center with your iPhones, any other phones, programmable calculators, smart watches, anything that has not been specified. We expect that you leave them behind. Let me also add that please, whenever you are going to exam center, make sure you put off your phones. Please make sure you put off your phones before you go to the exams center. If your phone rings in the exams hall, it disturbs other students. So please, let's try as much as possible and comport ourselves when we get to the exam center. We take keen interest in examination. So please, try as much as possible and go by all these rules and regulations. We expect you to listen to the invigilators. The invigilators are coming there in the name of the university. So we expect that you give them the maximum support as far as exams is concerned. When you misbehave towards any invigilator, it's like misbehaving towards the university and we won't take it lightly. So please take notes. Uh, let's look at our scannable sheets. We have a standardized scannable sheet whereby you have the student index number, we have the semester, we have your year, the program, the course code, and other details. We expect that where you have your index number or candidate number, we expect you to write the candidate number first, write them on top, and shade. The undergraduate student, you will realize that on the left-hand side, we have a PG number. The PG is not meant for undergraduate. It's meant for postgraduate. So the postgraduate student, you will realize that their index number starts with PG. The undergraduate, your index number doesn't start with PG. So undergraduate student, you start writing from after the PG. Then you provide the appropriate numbers and then shade them accordingly please those who have not shaded before try and learn them before you come to exams center it's very important if you shade a wrong index number your results will be considered zero please let me take that again if you shade a wrong index number your results or mark will be considered zero it means that it's not you so we can't associate that number to you as an individual. Try and then shade well. If you need support, consult your examination officer, your program exams officer, and they will assist you on how to do the shading before the mid -sell. During exams, that one will be considered as what? Business part. So nobody will guide you. We expect that you try as much as possible and learn all these. You provide the major details that we expect. Beneath the index number where you have the candidate number, there is a space there. We expect you to write your program, your major program. For instance, BSc in Agriculture, BSc in Business Administration. Then you provide the option. Then, we expect you to add the center where you are writing the exams. When you are done, you write or you sign your signature to show that this is your scannable sheet. That will differentiate your scannable sheet from the others. Try as much as possible to provide this information for us so that we can also help you. We are here to support you as students. We are here to assist you. So please, if you have any challenge, 
we expect you to consult your examination officer, your program exam officer, or your program coordinator so that they will assist you to go through whatever challenges that you have. We wish you the very best in your stay over here. God be with us all so that our stay will be very fruitful. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph Samwejau, counselor for KNUSD IDL. I welcome you all to today's orientation for all freshman IDL students. Congratulations for gaining admission to this prestigious university. I am here to give you a brief information on the KNUSD Council Center and how you can locate us, specifically myself, as the IDL counselor. The KNUSD Council Center provides the following general services to our students. One, help students overcome alcohol and substance abuse. We help students to balance their academic work with their social life. Others also include manage trauma and stress and crisis, build self-confidence, manage stress and anxiety, build healthier and stronger relationships, and many others. As an IDL student, you are not overlooked. Below are some specific services that I can provide as your counselor. One, help you develop good study skills. Help you to manage your relationship and marriage issues. Also, I will help you to balance your academic work with your social life. Something that is a big challenge for our students, IDL students. Also, I provide psychological assessment, being a behavioral, intellectual, or emotional. Please contact me on the following hotlines 0278 054-3797-216. I am available mostly during the normal working hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Do not hesitate to give me a call or text. Thank you for your attention and once again, welcome to KNUSD IDEA. Thank you for participating in this, our orientation. We are grateful. I know you play over and over and over so that your stay here will be comfortable for you. Please listen to this announcement. One, after this program, as you've listened, there will be one for your programs, and that will be tomorrow. And then the following, that is 19th and 20th January 2023 at 5 p.m. Also, they will be online. All this also will be online, so you need not travel to any of our centers. You can watch from your home. The link for this orientation has been shared already on the RDL website. Please check the dates for your respective program. Join it and ask any questions that may relate to your program. If you, have, if you have paid the commitment fee and yet to receive your login details or you have misplaced it, please visit the website, the address there, and click on Forget Password and follow the prompts. After your receipt, you will find your login details. You are required to register your courses for the semester. Still, 
the address is unchanged, as we can read from your slides. Download academic information management. That is the AIM app. If you don't, this will render you a non-student of the university. And so you'll not be able to take part in any activity of the institute. And this includes viewing your examination results and others. The portal for the semester registration had already been activated. And that was on Monday, 16 January 2023. So you can register. In fact, if you're not registered after that program, you can go and register. There also will be biometric registration and it will be at your center. The date will be communicated to you in due course. As I've said, you need not come to Kumase. Go to your center. We are there to serve you. Your ID card is not ready. It will be printed very soon, and you'll pick it from your center. When it's ready, you'll know because you send your information, or you can see it from our platform. We have scheduled a composite uh, psychology of online learning and workshop on the use of the virtual academic space for you. The address is still there. Please, it's also on the site. You can log in and participate. There's also WhatsApp and Telegram groups. You'll be added. So check if you don't have, if not on it, let us know. Or let your friend who is there supply us with your number and you add you to the group. As we said, we have technical support teams. They are available to help you. Use the learning management platform with your login details that is unique to you. Look for your programs, support persons, and liaise with him or her if you have any technical challenge. You are kindly to complete and submit your acceptance letters at your respective centers when you attend lectures. That's from this weekend, you can submit them. The acceptance form was attached to your admission letter. So you can print it there and submit it. Can you check the IDEA website to know your facilitation timetable, the dates and time for your lectures. If you have face-to-face -face class, that is the FF means face-to-face. -face. So you attend the lecture physically. Your presence there is needed. If you have an online class, please, you do not travel to the center, that, but log in in the comfort of your home. But if you know that the signals at your locality is weak, please get to a better place so that you can assess the online lectures. On your timetable, you are to please check the May semester and end of semester examination dates and rely on the final timetable, not the draft, because the draft may be changed. Also read other important policy documents that may guide you as a student of KNUST. Example, the student guide is vital. Please read. And then the graduate students, you should read the graduate students' handbook. It's very important. There are also policy documents on the website. Read for your education. You're also reminded to be decorous and respectful in your utterances both online and during physical lessons. Breakages and distractions of university properties are payable. Whether you are a center or you are at KN University, everything is payable. Your lectures begin on 21st of January 2023. That is Saturday, and it continues 22nd January 2023.
Sunday, always the two days. Thank you, and then we are ready to answer your questions. Yes, somebody is asking, how is the management team helping us on the short classes most of us experience? I tell lectures are not able to complete their lessons, not for the semester. Uh, well, we answer you, but we are supposed to talk to fresh students. I don't know whether you started your <laughs> lessons or you are from your previous <coughs> education. I guess it's a postgraduate student. You hear that, you respect the time. I think that is the answer for you. Then it's a question, what's the duration of MSc geography and sustainable development? May I ask Dr. Frimpong to answer that question? Right. The MSc in geography and sustainable development is one year. All the MSc's program are one year program. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And somebody said that I chose Takrade as my center, but I was given Accra. Can it be changed for me, or there is no agri center at Takrade? Yes, you've answered your question. You don't get enough students who want to read BSE Agriculture in our western zone, the Takuradi. So that is the reason why, why we don't have it there. As soon as the numbers pick up to our threshold, that is 50 plus, there will be a center there. Yes, yeah, somebody is trying to log in within my credentials on the AMAP, but it's not working. Well, probably we've not paid the required fees. Yeah, so we work on it and see that it is working. In our belief, it should be working. As I've said, go to the website, drop a message there, there's somebody there to assist you. <laughs> you said that you want to change your name. Oh, we are here to come and we are thinking about changing the name. From High Court, and I published it in the graphics. What do I do to have your? Yeah, please, you don't have uh, the sufficient one. We don't know whether you are a female or you are a male. So you may put in the application, and if it passes our test, we will change it for you. Please, is our student ID card the same as our index number? Yes, exams officer, Dr. Frimpong. I know the answer. Right. The student ID number is your application number, and that is totally different from the student index number. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so your index number will be generated. So there are two different numbers, the ID number and then index number. Thank you. Please, I've chosen Wa Upper West as my center and was given Kumasi. I think that this one we have explained. So all those who, uh, your centers that you chose were changed, it means that we did not have enough applicants for you there at the center. So we give you the nearest center. So from Wa, you are closer to Kumasi. That is why we were given Kumasi. So please, you can also encourage your friends to enroll with us, IDL, and you have our threshold. You can be at your doorstep. We promise you on that, depending on the number. Yes, I'm from Tamale, but my center is in Accra. I wish to change my, my center to Kumasi. Yes, if you're having the program in uh, any of the centers, we can change for you. Just apply.
I paid my fees. I want to register, but I'm not getting access to the AMAP. Yes, yeah, so our technical people will be working on the AMAP. You should have access to it. Yes, accountant, there is something for you. He said that he pays it through Momo. Dr. Boateng, if you can respond to those who are paying using the Momo account. Uh, thank you, Registrar. Momo account usually takes some time. But um, let's give ourselves five working days. If it's still persists, then you need to call our hotline and leave your details, and we're going to investigate further and get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody is what? Those who are located in the Eastern Region and will be doing MSC Management and Human Resources Strategy, you can choose Koforodia Center on my admission letter. I have to pursue for semester. I'm not quite getting the question. Okay, you read your question again and answer, please, if you can go on. Let, let me see, I've seen, no, somebody's asking a question there. I saw the level 200, I want to address it. Okay. I'm to pursue four semester, but when I called, they say I will start from level 200. Let me make this correction. In KNUST, you don't use levels. You are either in year one, year two, year three, year four. Year four, you can say final year. So we are particular about that. So since you are fresh, we pardon you. But next time, use year one, year two, year three, and not level. We are not constructing a house. Thank you. Yeah, so the question, the first semester, you might be a diploma student. So diploma, you've done the two years, and then you go to third year, and then the final year. So that is it. Yeah. Um, Let the data. To add to what uh -huh. the regist okay. uh, registrar said, um, possibly you are being asked to be in year two or second year, because possibly you are holding a certificate. We are diploma from Polytechnic. So there are differences. There's a group that are admitted to third year or year three and second year. So that is why possibly you are in second year. Yes, Mr. Uh, Dr. Martin, somebody's asking if there's a deadline for co uh, commitment fee. Yes, uh, thank you, Registrar. There is no specified deadline as far as payment of the commitment fee is concerned. Uh, however, it is in the interest of you to pay it on time because without that, you wouldn't be able to register to access the online resources. As it has been indicated, facilitation is commencing on 21st of this month, which is the coming weekend, Saturday. So you are to raise against time and make payments so that you'll be able to register and access the facilitation. And someone is asking about scholarship and fees paying. Yes. If you can uh, take that one too. Yeah, yes. Uh, if you have a scholarship, at the moment, you, we, it doesn't mean that you, 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 your account has been credited. So what we advise is that you make payment for the minimum uh, commitment fee so that you can access the online facilities and the resources that we have. When the fee is paid by the awarding institution to us, obviously you're going to have credit on your account of which you have the right to apply for us to refund the amount to you. So you need to make arrangements to make payments so that you will not lag when it comes to your facilitation and other studies related issues. Thank you. Thank you. And then there is an MSc student, a reporter extension, 
Professor Andrews, if you can take that. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Registrar. The, initially, that was omitted. But then if you go online as we speak, you'll be able to see the exact fee that you're supposed to pay for that particular program. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we have been discussing, we asked you these questions, the center that you chose, and then we'll be given another center in the same explanation. Economics. Yes, yeah, some of them are offered in Accra only. So it depends on what you chose. So check the name of your program. And that's why we're in Accra. If you are coming to Kumasi, there will be a different economics that you are coming to do. There's a different program. So check your application. If you want to change it to economics in Kumasi, there's an opportunity for you. It's the same department. I, this one, you don't answer. Yeah, if you pay your commitment fee, what next? Register. Go ahead and register. And start paying the rest of the fees. What's the advantage? I have an HND in tourism. I want to top up in business management. But unfortunately, I was given hospitality management. There's some officer, Dr. Frimpon, who is an expert, who answered that question for us. All right, thank you, Register. Uh, the BSc Business Administration Program top up is a top up of whatever you have done at the HND level. So if you have HND in hospitality, you need to top up in the same line. You can't branch to a different area. If you branch to a different area, you may not have the route to top up with. So that is why you've been given the area in which you did the HND in, so that you top it up in the same area. So if you have management, you can't come and do accounting. It means it is your transcript will not be sufficient. Pretty soon you come, you apply to do masters. Some in universities outside Ghana. They write to us to confirm why we have given you BSc. That is two years duration. What it means is that you have to support it with your HND or that higher diploma. Certificate, and that is why you cannot top up in a different area. So, please, all those who intend to change in your own interest, continue from where you have the HND or the advanced diploma. Thank you. Oh, yes. The presentation, we have our Makati Center. And then we have Kabenya SHS. So Accra, we have three centers. So please check on your timetable and see where your course is being facilitated. It is important. You may be at Kabenya Center or Makati Center or Kabenya SHS Center. That, that's Accra. And Kumase, too, we are on our main campus here. Is there any other question? Medical. Yes. Medical. Yes, you have to be examined. So please. It is necessary that you go for the checkup. Come on. Now. 
Okay. Yeah. Listening to us, we thank you so much. We are getting to the end of the program. And let me do this introduction. First of the seat is Dr. Foster Frimpong, IDL examinations officer. You'll be seeing many of and a couple of times. You heard him speaking about 30 minutes. Next to him is Professor Anthony Andrews. He's the deputy director of IDL. Also, you'll be seeing him very often. Next is our own director, Professor Addo. He wanted to be called Matthew Grover Addo. So he is the director of our institutes. And then if you followed and then listened to the finance matters, that is Dr. Felix Oben Boatin. He is the institute finance officer. So all your finances is ready to answer. And my good self is the, your in registrar, Osu Ansan Debra. We thank you for joining us. You are once again welcome to this prestigious university called Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. Thank you for joining us, and then we'll be meeting with you until you, we give you your certificate. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you.